Hi, this is Digital CT editor Rich Sampson. I welcome to you to this podcast portion of our Pennsylvania Transit Tour edition of Digital CT Magazine. In addition to the written profiles that we've done on a number of our members, uh, we're having a few join us uh, remotely by uh, podcast format to, so you can hear their voices and get their, uh, their story firsthand. So on the line with us now is Eric Wolf, who's the general manager at Amtran in Altoona, Pennsylvania. So welcome, Eric. Thanks, Rich. Good to be here. Great. And uh, to get our folks familiar with Amtran in Altoona, just tell us a little bit about your system, you know, uh, where do you serve? What kind of service do you provide? Uh, how many riders, drivers, those kinds of uh, name, rank, serial number type of questions? Right, right. Um, let's see. We have a vehicle fleet of 26 uh, heavy duty 12 year buses. Uh, we've got 45 employees, uh, 29 of which are bus drivers full time and part time, and then the rest are maintenance management advisory. Our budget is about $5 million a year, and our ridership is about 600000 per year. Uh, we cover the central part of Blair County, of which Altoona is the center, and then Logan and Allegheny Townships, which surround, and also Hollidaysburg Borough, which is our county seat. Gotcha. And do you pro- also provide the complimentary paratransit, or is that uh, someone else handles that? We actually subcontract that through Blair Senior Services, who I would like to go on record as saying is one of the best shared ride providers in the Commonwealth. Excellent. Well, that's what we like to hear. And no, it's kind of a a great balance that you have there between you all doing the fixed route side and they cover uh, the, you know, the expanded demand response and paratransit side. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, the one little twist is um, because we were the only client they were serving on Saturdays, they kind of had to charge us a lot so about a few years ago we took over the saturday paratransit service so it's kind of a plus we're saving money plus we're sort of keeping our hand in that side of the business which is very different yeah kind of preventing atrophy on the on those muscles exactly exactly so um folks may know where altoona is or maybe they don't can you just tell us a little bit about the town itself and kind of the work that you do in, in getting people around altoona and kind of beyond that Absolutely. Um, Altoona is in the western part of the state. Uh, It's near Johnstown. It's near State College, where Pennsylvania State University is. Um, We we were actually the first transit authority in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. People think that's cool. I just say, well, our streetcar business went out of business first. (laughs) So um, the downtown merchants all decided they couldn't do without bus service. So they uh, put together a joint authority of the city and the surrounding township, and that's when we came into being in 1958. 1958. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Yeah. At that time, the Pennsylvania Railroad was still a big player in uh, our region. It has since uh, declined significantly. It is no longer the major employer, and it kind of took us a while to bounce back from that. Um, the The three big industries in this region are coal, steel, and railroads. Sure. And, of course, none of those have been booming in the last 30 years. So um, we have uh, our economy has begun to diversify over the past 20 years. And just in the past five years, we've seen our downtown Altoona area starting to come back again. After many, many years of hoping and planning and pretending, it was actually resurging. Now we're actually seeing a renaissance downtown. So we're very excited about that because it is centrally, it's the central part of our service area. And so we still had our transit center there. So now that downtown is coming back, we're very excited to be a part of that. Excellent, Eric. Um, we also uh, play are a big player with Penn State Altoona. It's the largest of the Commonwealth campuses. Uh, Penn State University Park, the main campus, is about an hour away uh, to the north of us. Uh, Penn State Altoona is very important, and they actually have a presence in downtown as well as their um, Ivy Side campus, which is kind of on the border of the city, and we are the connector between the downtown campus and the Ivy Side campus, so we get a lot of ridership from Penn State Altoona. Yeah, so you you, you provide the, the bus service for the campus uniquely. They don't have their own uh, local. Correct. Yeah. And just to follow up kind of for anyone who's a rail fan out there, uh, Altoona was famous in the Pennsylvania Railroad days for the Altoona locomotive shops uh, that produced uh, most and maintained most of their steam and then later diesel fleet. So it, it was a big footprint there. Absolutely. We're also famous for the Horseshoe Curve, which is how the railroad conquered the Allegheny Ridge by curving uh, around and up the mountain. That's how the railroads got up the hill. 
Yeah, it's a, a fascinating piece of infrastructure uh, that we covered in our rail magazine about 10 years ago. And if you've never seen it, it is actually something to, to behold. And I, I think the local baseball team is actually named in honor of that too, right? That's correct. We are the Altoona Curve. Sure. Our uh, Pittsburgh Pirates uh, AA affiliate. Cool. Well, Eric, you know, you, you kind of talked about some of the challenges that uh, Altoona faces kind of economically and uh, also opportunities and revitalization. What are your challenges as an agency and also opportunities that you see uh, kind of big picture? What, what, are, what's, what are things that you're facing and things that you're excited about? Um, one of the things that we're facing that we're also kind of excited about is for a very long time, our tripper fleet was made up of... Um, GMC New Looks, which are now 40 plus years old, um, which is certainly a testament to our maintenance department that mm -hmm. they were able to keep them on the road for that long. But after all these years, the uh, Pennsylvania salt on the roads have finally led to the corrosion to such a point where they're no longer viable. So the good news is uh, this summer we're going to be retiring the last of our 40 year old GMC New Looks, and we will be replacing them with brand new uh, CNG Gillicks. So we're very excited about that. We have a number of restoration organizations and museums that we are looking to donate some of the GMC new looks to. Um, that's kind of different for us. The last time we got rid of some, a couple people bought them and sold them for scrap. And yeah. that, just, that just broke our hearts. So um, some of the ones that have been kind of pretty heavily cannibalized for parts, we will be selling off to the highest bidder. And if they go to scrap, we can live with that. But we're going to be donating them to some people who um, have a track record of being able to restore this kind of vehicle and have the, the resources to do so. So we're very, very excited about that. Yeah, well, uh, for folks who have been to Pennsylvania, particularly Western Pennsylvania, there's a great, you know, very tough railroad legacy, or not railroad, transportation legacy, including railroads uh, across that part of Pennsylvania. And preserving things really matters up there, wouldn't you say, Eric? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we are still um, doing everything we can to preserve our railroad history and um, where we were a tiny part of that uh, back when the railroad was booming, getting folks to and from work. Sure. And uh, kind of continuing that legacy with the, the 40 bus, four year old buses. Uh, hopefully most folks can't uh, say that they operate things that long. But yeah, like you said, credit to your, your maintenance staff for keeping those running so many years. Absolutely. Um, Eric, are you having any trouble uh, attracting or retaining uh, drivers? Uh, I know that uh, your colleague, uh, Josh Baker, did a webinar with uh, Karen Susan not too long ago, but can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing on driver recruitment and retention? Yes. Um, actually, up, in, up until recently, uh, this was still a very good job for Altoona. Everybody starts part-time, but by the time you get to full-time and get benefits, um, we are a union shop. So it is a good job in the Altoona area. So we have not been having a lot of trouble recruiting, but a lot of my colleagues across the state and, of course, across the country are. Um, we are trying to get a little more with it. We are using some social media elements. We've been kind of updating how we talk about what we do. Um, the younger generation today is very much mission-driven, at least that's the generalization, but, you know, universally true. But we try and, you know, talk about the idea that we make a difference in people's lives every day. We're not some, you know, highfalutin Madison Avenue firm using sex and lies to sell crap that people don't need. We're actually, we have an impact in our community and we help people make their lives better. And, you know, would you like to be a part of that if that sounds good? then, you know, here, here's some more information. Here's our mission. Here's our vision. Here are our values. Here are, you know, our strategic plan. And here's an online application. So we try to sort of lead them through the process. Um, I think we all remember it went back in the day when it was almost kind of a mirror test to uh, get uh, hired at a transit authority. If you held a mirror up to somebody's nose and they were clearly breathing, here you go. <laughs> you're, you're on the roster. And uh, the other mistake we made, was you know hiring ex truckers because they already had the CDL. How cool is that? Well, the problem is you know the freight doesn't ask questions. <laughs> the freight doesn't ask you to interact with them. You know the freight doesn't need to ask for assistance. So we are trying to, and we've we've had a lot of success in the last ten years working on our hiring process so we get quality employees who actually enjoy interacting with the customers, who enjoy helping people, who really embrace our mission. 
uh, getting people where they need to go to improve their quality of life. Well, Eric, yeah, you, you mentioned a couple times there, you know, the importance of people and how much you prioritize the work you do in getting people where they need to go in referencing your mission and values. What does all that mean in terms of uh, how people are using your service? Are they using it to get to health care, maintain employment? What are the outcomes that uh, Amtran is providing in Altoona? Absolutely. Um, I had mentioned Penn State Altoona. Um, their expansion into the downtown area was a big piece of the renaissance of downtown. And so that moving forward it helps them. It helps us. They have a beautiful bucolic campus on the edge of uh, town. And if they had continued building, they would have had to pretty much pave it over completely. <laughs> so by expanding in the downtown, they helped our downtown. They helped save some beautiful old buildings. And now we have a lot more activity happening down there. Um, of course, senior citizens are a big piece of our work uh, in Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Lottery has always supported free rides for seniors, so that's a big plus for people 65 and over. Um, we also have um, our tripper service uh, helps uh, school students, local students get to school, and that's a big piece of what we do as well. And of course, you know, like many small cities, our, our profile is frequently, you know, you have a working family, um, both mom and dad work, and but they only own one car. Right. So one person takes the car and the other person uses the bus. So that's kind of a cross-section of uh, how we serve the community. And and we've talked a little bit about Penn State Altoona and, and kind of how you connect the campuses and provide uh, service for the students there. What what does that involve uh, on operational side? What do you need to do to kind of respond to their needs? Well, actually, the the good news is um, they are at one end of town, and then the commercial retail is at the other end of town. So we were only already serving both ends, and we did a major redesign. It's a while back now, back in 2010. And as part of that, we were like, okay, let's better serve both of those ends. So right now, uh, Penn State Altoona, at the one end of our service area, has service every 20 minutes on three different bus routes. So a student can hop on any time in 20 minutes. And in a small city, that's really the most frequent service we have anywhere here. Sure. Um, so that helps them to get downtown, but it also connects them to the rest of our route if they want to go shopping or see a movie or any of those things. And the deal we set up with Penn State Altoona that goes way, way back is that um, we use part of Penn State Altoona's investment as local share, but then the rest of it goes to fare replacement because all of the students for Penn State Altoona ride free. Right. So that makes it a lot easier. And then the big selling point for Penn State Altoona is then they can say to parents who are interested, hey, you don't have to have your kid have a car. Yeah, you don't need they that They tell you expense. they have to have a car, but we have frequent good bus service. So, you know, if that can save you some money and if that helps you choose Penn State Altoona, that's wonderful for them. And like you already mentioned, it helps the the, the university itself uh, avoid more parking lots and things like that exactly. so they can better use their land. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and Eric, you mentioned you're, uh, you're replacing the, the 40 year vehicles with some CNG vehicles. Um, what are your alt, alt fuel kind of needs and uh, strategy looking like uh, going forward? Um, before this newest round that'll be coming this summer, the last bus we bought were back in 2012 and they were three diesel electric hybrids. And uh, the way I describe them, it's the only bus I've ever seen that the customers and the bus drivers and the mechanics all love them. Oh, wow. I think they're terrific. So we were very, very happy with those. We're getting excellent mileage out of them. Um, however, uh, Pennsylvania statewide has been making a push to support compressed natural gas because of the Marcellus shale, um, shale gas that is in the area. So PennDOT, uh, our state DOT, started an initiative uh, to build some infrastructure for CNG. So PennDOT actually uh, installed and built a CNG fueling station here on our property and is helping us purchase new buses. So we're getting six new ones uh, about a month from now. We'll be having our ribbon cutting for that and for the CNG fueling station. And then later this year, we're getting 10 more uh, CNG buses from Gillig. And that is the most buses we have ever bought in any single year, a total of 16. So right now, because of those 40-year-old buses I keep referring to, um, the average age of our fleet is currently 19 years, 
And of course, anytime I'm sitting around with colleagues and they talk about their aging fleet, I just raise my hand and say, anybody else got 40-year-old buses? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. But, yeah, but I won't have that brag anymore. Most people get to eight and nine, and they they get a little hot under the col- under the collar. But uh, you got them passed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the great news is, um, with these sixteen new buses coming in, by the end of this calendar year, our average age will go from nineteen down to five, mm-hmm. and uh, that makes me feel better because, frankly, that's that's a cloud hanging over my head sure. for the entire 20 years I've been here at Amtran is, oh my God, what are we going to do about this? <laughs> oh, so old. Well, you, you'll hear that the CNG theme uh, here and read that theme kind of repeated throughout our other profiles. Uh, nearly all of the systems we visited over this transit tour uh, had at least one or two vehicles, if not more. Uh, I was just in Norristown uh, the other day visiting with uh, Suburban Transit Network, and they just received their first CNG body on chassis coach. So it's a pretty comprehensive statewide thing, and obviously it's going to have a great impact for you guys, Eric. Absolutely. We're very excited. We're very pleased about it. Well, speaking of impact and kind of direction, uh, what does the future hold for Amtran? Where do you, where do you see yourselves heading uh, maybe 10, 15 years down the road? I, that, that's an excellent question and one we're all really grappling with. Um, I was recently interviewed by the local paper and I talked about, you know, the, the incremental change that has happened over the past 10 years are our embrace of technology. Um, we were, for a small urban, we were very early adopters for uh, GPS and all the buses and being able to push real-time bus departures out to our customers um, as far back as nine years. So we were an early adopter with that, and so we've got multiple ways for our customers to get information. They can call in, and the computer will tell them when their bus will be all the way down to their stop, and uh, they can text, and we also have an app. Uh, for both Android and um, iPhones. So that's all been wonderful over the past 10 years or so. But what what I believe is that that is nothing compared to what we're going to be facing in the next 10 years, whether you're talking about the um, hailing services like Uber or Lyft, talking about autonomous vehicles. I think the last 10 years will be a cakewalk. <laughs> to the next. And, and it, it's simply an ongoing conversation at this point. Um, I was out at Gillig recently just asking them about, you know, additional safety features and, you know, where do they see the future of autonomous vehicles? And um, I don't want to speak for them, but, you know, they're, they are working on that, but they're saying we sure aren't there yet. Um, so there, there's a lot that's going to change in the next few years. Um, and we just need to be flexible because I'm not sure anybody can predict at this point where we're going to end up in, in five years, let alone in 10. Yeah, it's such a time of both uh, uncertainty and potential opportunity, uh, Absolutely. but it feels like we have to thread the needle sometimes a little tightly on it. Yep, I agree. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I think we'll be interested in your thoughts and your colleagues' thoughts, uh, not only across Pennsylvania, but um, across our industry on how do these emerging some call them disruptive technologies impact transit in different ways uh i think the impact on fixed route bus will be important and totally different than it is on demand response and paratransit and yes i agree it's going to be uh an interesting time over the next few years so uh fortunately uh you have a stable role in altoona um and are embracing you know ways of doing business that aren't uh stuck in the past necessarily but are flexible and responsive Yep, that's what we're trying for. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there, Eric, and uh, we certainly appreciate your time here uh, speaking with our listeners and members across the country, Uh, and we hope to see everybody uh, out in Pittsburgh in just a couple weeks from now at our Expo uh, 2018 in Pittsburgh, and uh, we encourage you to get out and ride the systems across Pennsylvania, and as uh, Shauna Russell from PPTA told me the other day, buy some lotto tickets when you're in Pennsylvania. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to have a pretty good sized crew in Pittsburgh for the uh, CTA Expo. We're very excited. We've got people going to the uh, training, the intensive training, and then uh, Josh Baker is uh, pr- doing some a presentation with Karen, and then I'm doing a presentation with Mike Knowles. So we are going to be there in force. Well, thanks again, Eric, and uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you out in Pittsburgh. Have a good one.